This is Tony Broom Ministries with a message from God's Anointed Word. The Bible talks to us about two events, His appearing and His kingdom. Scriptures are 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Now the message entitled, His appearing and His kingdom. The Bible talks about His appearing and His kingdom. It's not the same thing. I want to talk to you about His appearing and His kingdom. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at His appearing and His kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine. These verses talk to us about the appearing and His kingdom. And He said, I charge you. This is a charge. It's a serious thing. It's got to be an urgent thing because He said, I charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. That's serious business. Yes, it is. When you used to do something bad and your mama get a hold to you, that's serious business. Yes, it is. When she told your daddy and he got a hold to you, that's really serious business. Yes. And he said, I charge you before God. That's serious business. And the Lord Jesus Christ, that's really serious business. Mm -hmm. Who shall judge the quick and the dead mm -hmm. at his appearing and his kingdom? He's going to judge. There's more than one judgment. There's probably seven judgments. But in the big scheme of things, the big two main things about judgment is he'll judge the quick and the dead. That means he judges those who are alive and those who are dead. It don't matter whether you're dead as a doornail or whether you're alive jumping around. He's still going to judge you one way or the other. He'll judge the quick and the dead. And he'll judge them at his appearing and his kingdom. The two big judgments we talk about is the judgment of the saved, the Christian judgment, and the judgment of the lost, the white throne judgment. Either way, you're going to be in one of them two judgments. You're either going to be judged as a Christian for not being a Christian or lost, but you're going to be judged for what you've done for the Lord or not done for the Lord. Amen. And if you're a sinner, you're going to be at the white throne and you're going to be judged because you didn't have nothing to do with the Lord. Amen. Either way, you're going to face the judgment. The quick and the dead at His appearing and His kingdom. The appearing of Jesus is when He comes to rapture the church and we meet Him in the air. There is going to be a meeting in the air in the sweet, sweet by and by. I will meet you, meet you, meet you over there in that home beyond the sky. Such singing we will hear, never heard by mortal ear, will be glorious, I do declare. For God's own Son will be the leading one at that meeting in the air. And there's going to be that meeting when we all get together. Jesus comes from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. We who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. And we're going to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. There's going to be a meeting like you've never seen. The meeting in the air. His kingdom is when He comes to the earth the second time to judge and set up His kingdom to rule the world in righteousness. These two events are separated by what is called the seven-year tribulation period. You don't want to be in that awful time of the tribulation period. His appearing comes when He raptures the church, and then the tribulation sets in. The Antichrist is given full sway. He rules this world in evil. He takes over all kind of evil. If you think it's bad now, you ain't seen nothing yet, and hopefully you're not going to be here to see that. But that's going to be an awful time, a time when... People will even desire to die and won't even be able to. At a time when mothers and fathers will turn against their children like never before. A time when everybody will be out for their own self. A time when he, the Antichrist will set up in the temple and he will demand worship. He will be like God. He will demand that everybody worship him like God. He will set up the false image in the holy temple and he will demand that everybody bow down to him. All currency, all economic systems will be turned to Him. And you can't buy anything. You can't sell anything. You can't go to the grocery stores. You can't go to Wally World. You can't do anything unless you have that mark. And when you take that mark, you're forever lost. You're forever doomed. 
such an awful time. And I'm afraid, brothers and sisters, that if people don't get right with God, some of our children, some of our grandchildren, some of our people in our own home, some of our people that we're kin to, somebody you don't even know, there are going to be many of them left here to take that awful mark of the beast if we don't get right with God. It's an awful time that's going to take over this world. In the reality of these things, the appearing in the kingdom, there are three simple things that we ought to do. One of them is preach the word. He said, I charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Now, when he judges, he didn't come to the world the first time to judge. He came to the world the first time to save. They thought he was going to come down here and be a big dude and sit up there and take over the government, take it away from the Romans and put it back in Israel's hands. He said, I didn't come to do that the first time. Yeah, I came to be king, all right, but the king that they were looking for was a king who would sit on a throne, an ivory throne, would have a rod of iron. He's coming like that the second time. But they were looking for that kind of king. The king that he came as was a little bitty baby born in Bethlehem. That's the way he came the first time. But they didn't receive him. They rejected him. Oh, no good thing can come out of Nazareth. We ought to be like that disciple said, yeah, but wait a minute, you ought to come and see for yourself. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, something good can come out of Nazareth because he didn't really come out of Nazareth. He just lived in Nazareth. He really came out of Bethlehem. That's just like asking a preacher, well, preacher, where are you from? He said, well, wait a minute, that's all depending on where you're talking about. <laughs> said, now, this, this year I was in Mississippi. Last time I was in New York. This year I was in L.A. And 10 years ago I came from Florida. So ain't no telling where I came from. I was looking back to see if she was looking back to see if I was looking back to see if you were looking back at me. <laughs> he said, judge, he will judge, all right, but he's not coming the first time to judge. He didn't come the first time to judge. He came to save. And when he comes again, the scripture says when Jesus was here the first time, he said, I came to judge no man. But then he said, the father has committed all judgment into my hand. So when is he going to judge? He's going to judge when he comes again. When he comes again, he's not coming as a little lamb. He's coming as a lion of the tribe of Judah. When he's coming again, he's not coming to be put on the cross. When he comes again, he's not coming to be spit at. When he comes again, he's not coming to play. His name might start with J, but he ain't coming to play. And I'm telling you, when he comes again, praise God, he's coming to rule and reign in righteousness and holiness. Praise God, yes, he is. And he said, I'm, he's the one that will judge the quick and the dead. And the first thing that we ought to do is to preach the word. Preach the word. Don't be playing games. It's all right to have good time in church. But church ain't all about games. It ain't all about bubble gum. It ain't all about popcorn. It ain't all about cracker jacks. It's all about the Word of God. It's all about getting people saved. It's all about the sanctifying power of the Holy Ghost. It's all about being filled with the Holy Ghost. It's all about letting the power of God fall. When our generation that we live in needs to see the power of God fall. And we need to see where the power of God can move and the sick can be healed again. Won't nobody be going around with blind eyes like me. Me. Well, nobody be going around with crippled limbs like you because the power of God be done showed up. Jesus will be done come in the midst. Preach the word. We don't turn our churches over into circuses. We don't make this. We don't have churches anymore. We have this Christian center. Christian center. And we're going to take the word Christian out of it before too long because that's going to offend somebody. We don't got so politically correct that we're spiritually dead. Preach the word. Mm -hmm. And the other thing he says do is preserve your own heart. That means be instant in season and out of season. That means when you feel good, praise God. That means when you don't feel good, praise Him anyhow. It's like the choir said, hallelujah, anyhow. You got to praise Him in the morning. You got to praise Him in the evening. You got to praise Him when the sun goes down. Praise God. You got to praise Him anyway because He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Preserve your own heart. David said, when I didn't have nobody to help me, I looked on my left hand. Nobody was there. I looked on my right hand. Nobody cared for my soul. He said, I tell you what I'm going to do. Everybody's 
talking against me. They're even talking like they're going to stone me. And he said, I'm going to, I'm going to encourage myself in the Lord my God. He said when he didn't have nobody to help him, he encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Be instant in season and out of season. When your body aches, praise Him anyway. When you have a hard time, praise Him anyway. When your family comes to see you, and when they don't come to see you, praise Him anyway. When you have money in your pocket, and you don't have money in your pocket, praise Him anyway. Be instant in season and out of season. So preach the Word. Preserve your own heart. And prepare the people of God. There's sometimes you've got to reprove. That means, uh-uh, we might not all do that. Then there's sometimes you've got to rebuke. You've got to be a little bit sterner. Yes. Then there's sometimes that you've got to reprove and rebuke. And there's sometimes you've got to exhort. You know, you can't be again everybody all the time. You can't be against everything all the time. Right. Somebody's against everything. Some people are. Yeah. I mean, it don't matter who wins the election. It don't matter what's going on. They're against everything. If you got a black preacher, they're against that. If you got a white preacher, they're against that. If you got one church that jumps and hollers, they're against that. If you got one church that sits there still, they're against that. They're against everything. Somebody needs to ask the question, well, what do we need to be doing to make you happy? Just yeah, like the man who went fishing. He had caught a fish and he came home and the genie come out of the fish and she said I'm telling you what to do all you got to do is just make a wish just make three wishes and you'll have it and the man comes home and he said I don't know what to wish for I'm telling you I just don't know what to wish for because I'm so afraid I'm going to wish for the wrong thing he had his wife there she didn't know what to tell him he said he leaned back in his chair and he said oh boy I'm tired I, would just, I wish I had a big sausage for dinner <laughs> Bam, all that sausage came his wife said, you cotton-picking joker, I can't believe you wish for something like that. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard. Now you done got one of your wishes gone. I tell you what, I wish that sauce was, was on your nose. Bow! It went on his nose. Oh, man, he had a big sausage on his nose. He said, I got to go around the rest of my life with that sausage on my nose. She started crying. And he said, I tell you, I just wish that sausage wasn't here at all. Boop. It was gone. That's all it was. <laughs> well, you don't know to get what you wish for all the time. Woo! <laughs> I wish I could quit wishing, don't you? Uh, yeah. Preach the word. Preserve your heart. Prepare the people of God. So you can't be against everything all the time. Sometimes we got to exhort one another. We got to pick each other up. Now you can't tote the whole load all the time. Somebody got to help to pull the wagon a little bit. But you got to exhort each other. You got to help buoy each other on. And the Word of God got to be preached. People got to get ready. The people of God better get ready. The world better get ready. Jesus is coming. His appearing in His kingdom, the kingdom of God. The lost must be saved and the children of God must be ready because He's coming again. He said, In such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man is coming. That means he's coming when the preacher don't think so. That means he's coming when the deacon don't think so. That means he's coming when a lot of church folks don't think so. And certainly he's coming when the world don't think so. Because they're not looking for him. But you and I who are right with God, we're looking for him. We got victory on our mind. Thank you for joining us for this message from God's Anointed Word. The title has been His Appearing and His Kingdom. Make sure that Jesus Christ is your Savior and Lord. Ask Him into your heart, and you'll be ready when He comes again. This has been a production of Tony Broom Ministries.